pretty sure I'm the last reviewer to make a video on this guy, but you know what they say, better late than never. Welcome to Five Points of Articulation, where I review action figures and then articulate five points to help you decide if you want to add that figure to your collection. The five points I discuss are packaging, presentation, posability, playability, and price. I'm Jason, and if you enjoy my content, please like, share, subscribe, do all the YouTube rigmarole. Today, we're taking a long overdue look at the DC Multiverse Infinite Frontier Joker. Apologies in advance, by the way, if I'm not my usual peppy self. Currently, I'm a bit under the weather. Starting off with the packaging, we have our standard DC Multiverse window box. Name and logo here. On the side, we see this is Joker from Infinite Frontier. For those using apps like BrickSeek, here's the barcode. And then on the back, we get a fairly generic picture of the Joker. I mean, there's nothing wrong with it. It just doesn't look like this version. With this art available, I'm kind of surprised by that. Although, I guess it looks like one of his eyes is missing. Granted, it's the wrong eye. Again, not an issue so much as a missed opportunity. For packaging, I'm giving Joker an all point. Moving on to presentation, and Joker stands at seven and a quarter inches. For on the top, and no, Joker is not winking at you. He's actually missing an eye. It was shot out by Harley Quinn. But don't worry, he has this one between his fingers. When I first saw promotional images of this figure, I assumed it was going to be just another reuse of the clown, but with a new head and torso. I'm happy to report that it's a 100% new sculpt. The face is heavily stylized and has a lot of personality. I'm a bit conflicted though on the hair. Oh, don't get me wrong, it's been fantastically sculpted. Also, the paint detailing is superb. I just don't know how I feel about the design. Kind of feels like the Joker is about to break out into a duet with the heat miser. Then again, the next Joker movie is a musical. The pop collar is a fun different look for the character and the black shirt really stands out. Nice marigold corsage this time around. The green vest is particularly vibrant and overall so is the purple. I'm very pleased to see McFarlane went in and painted all the buttons and the paint job on the eyeball between twixt his fingers is very crisp as well. The squared off shoulders is a bold look that puts me in mind of Jack Nicholson's Joker, and then flipping around we can see the back of that coat and also the tails. You'll likely notice that as is often the case, the joints don't exactly match. Same on the knees unfortunately, but compared to other figures I've looked at in the past, in this case it's barely noticeable. Bringing my custom kit bash out for a second, we can see the difference in the line work. The pants on Infinite Frontier are straighter and more wrinkled, and despite some similarities, even the spats are completely new sculpts. Though for some reason, the pins are purple instead of black. I've been reviewing DC Multiverse figures for over two years. In that time, I cannot think of a more perfect translation from paper to plastic. For a presentation, this Joker gets one whole point. Moving on to posability, and the extra long neck does add some range. He can look up this high, which is a lot better than I expected because of the hair, but because of the chin, he can only look down this far. On the other hand, Joker gets a great amount of tilt, and all the way around. Moving on down, his arm can raise 90 degrees. Near as I can tell, he doesn't have a rotator cuff, but there is a bit of wiggle in there. He also has bicep swivel, perfect double jointed elbows, and wrist balls. They can hinge this high and that far down. Moving to the middle, and in the interest of not breaking up the sculpt, the torso is a soft rubber overlay. Unfortunately, because of the coat, he can't really hunch back, and he can only hunch forward this far. He gets a bit of tilt, but not as much as usual, but no problem with twist. Naturally, Joker has McFarlane style hips. They can kick 90 degrees and do a perfect split. No real twist on the hip this time around, unfortunately, but he does have double jointed knees, toe articulation, and McFarlane ankles that can swivel, hinge, and pivot. Other than the lack of a diaphragm cut, this is pretty much everything we've come to expect, and honestly I doubt a diaphragm would have gotten much better range anyway. For posability, I'm giving Joker one whole point. Before we continue, if you like this video, do me a favor and give it a like. It might not cure me, but it'll make me feel better. Moving on to playability, and of course he comes with a trading card to figure stand. If somehow you've never heard of the Joker, feel free to pause here. Yet another missed opportunity not to explain this particular version of the character. Otherwise, all the Joker comes with is this knife. For sure, it's got some very unique detail. Also, it fits in his hand like so. But I can't help but feel that maybe this is packed just a little light. If I'm being honest, though, I've not read this story, so I don't know what other accessories this version of Joker could come with. I honestly don't even know if this knife is from the comic. Still, some alternate hands at least would have been a nice touch. But playability is more than just making the same complaints about the lack of accessories. It's also about how well your figure plays with others. For my entire McFarlane Joker collection, and here we have Arkham Asylum. In terms of height 
and basic body shape, these are pretty close. Maybe if you were curious about ad swap, and let's be honest, we all know you are. Here you go. It doesn't look bad, but it might be a touch too small. Other way around though, and I really like this. Thanks to the longer jaw, it's a pretty good match for this style. You will, however, need to do something about the hands. Next up, and here we have Rebirth. These are honestly even closer. For my money, this one really doesn't work. The head's just too small and sits too low. Other way around though, and once again, I like it. I still say this head needs a total repaint to be passable. Otherwise though, it's a really cool look. Unfortunately, because the pegs aren't the same size, there aren't any other head swaps you can do without getting really creative. For one of my favorites, and here we have the comedian from the Three Joker story. Here we have the criminal. I no longer have the clown because I sacrificed it for this kit bash. Personally, I think it was worth it. But if you're curious where that kit bash came from, and here we have Death of the Family. As we can see, they have matching black shirts. For one of my other favorites, and here we have Mortal Kombat 11. But for one of my least favorites, and here we have Dark Knight Returns. Lastly, from McFarlane, and here we have Heath Ledger as he appeared in the Dark Knight. But just for scaling purposes, from DC Direct, here we have Batman and Son, and the DC Essentials Deceased. For some other villains, and since she is the one who shot his eye out, I figure we'd start with Harley Quinn. This one's also DC Essentials. Here we have Arkham Asylum from DC Direct. Here is Arkham City by Mattel. And then for a couple of DC Multiverse, here we have Margot Robbie as she appeared in the Suicide Squad, and Birds of Prey. Veering off to some other villains, and here we have Arkham City Catwoman, Arkham City Penguin, Arkham City Riddler, Two-Face from the Dark Knight Trilogy, Arkham City Ra's al Ghul, Arkham Knight Scarecrow, Arkham Origins Deathstroke, Comic Style Deathstroke, Comic Style Talon, and Comic Style Hush. Of course, for the one you've all been waiting for, and here we have Batman. This one's from Detective Comics 1000, Arkham Knight, Grim Knight, Flashpoint, Battle Damaged, Three Jokers, Rebirth, Future State, Dark Detective, Page Punchers, Page Punchers, Speeding Bullets, Dark Knight Returns, The Batman of Zurinar, The Batman Who Laughs, Batman Beyond, Arkham City, and Batman of Earth 2. And no, I didn't forget the live action versions. I just felt that they were so stylistically different that it was okay to skip them. For a relative scale comparison, here's Joker with Pizza Spidey and the Spectacular Spider-Man. And as always, here he is with Stealth Iron Man. This figure's a really good modern comic book Joker and it's gonna look great on your shelf. My frustrations with the lack of accessories aside, for playability, I'll give him the Joker. Whole point. This leaves us with nothing left to discuss but the price. This is the kind of figure that I feel like how much you pay for it makes a difference. I got mine as part of a discounted bundle on McFarlandToysStore.com. On top of that, I got an additional 10% discount. Had I paid 20, I might not have thought it was worth it. And if I paid more than 20, this would be a very different conversation. Only you can know what a figure is worth to you, but for price, I'm giving the Joker one whole point for a grand total of five out of five. Let me know what you think in the comments below, and while you're down there, tell me what version of the Joker you'd like to see McFarlane make next. If you like this video, check out one of these. Thank you so much for watching. I'll be back again real soon, but until then, play nice and have fun.